What's up guys? It's good to be doing some recording again. I took a break for a while there to, you know, work on my uh, COVID beard and uh, also to finish up the Burt ebook. So that's, that's done. It's published. Um, check it out. I'm really proud of it. I think it, it turned out really well. So we've got a lot of like informative content uh, in the near future here, but for this video, I, I wanted to do something a little more lighthearted, a little more fun. Um, as I've been doing all this research into Burt and, you know, learning about how, like, how smart Burt is, how, how, uh, you know, well, it's able to understand text and, you know, it clearly knows like the meaning of words. So, or the meaning of many words. Um, so it must know like some factoids too, right? Like it's got to know a little bit about politics or a little bit about history and science, um, and sports. So, you know, I've always been curious, like, all right, just how much like world knowledge does Bert have in addition to its understanding of sentence structure and grammar and things like that? So the the um, the way I came up with to test that is to kind of pose these quiz questions to Bert, and they're in the form of like fill in the blanks. So it's you know it's like a it's a sentence that represents some kind of like factoid, and a key detail is missing, which you know in in order to fill it in, like you need to you need to have a knowledge of history, say, in order to you know to answer the question. Uh, and Google pre-trained Bert on you know, one of the two tasks was the masked language model where they'd mask out words and then have Bert predict what those words are. So I'm using kind of that feature of Bert to, to test its knowledge here. And I haven't done any like additional fine tuning. So this is just like, this is just the, you know, pre-trained version of Bert. Um, yeah, so I've got a table of questions and I've got an iterator for those. So I'm just going to bounce back and forth between these two cells. We're going to pose a question to Bert, see what its answer is, see whether it got it right. And I think it's pretty fun to see some of its answers. All right, so the first question. In blank, Christopher Columbus sailed across the ocean to discover the Americas. All right, so what is it, Bert? 1492, all right. That's, that's a pretty uh, you know, well-known date, I think, especially if you're uh, in the US, probably. On to the next question, here we go. The Second Punic War broke out in blank after Hannibal's attack on uh, Saguntum? <laughs> Not sure. All right. No idea. Let's see if Bert knows. Holy cow, yes it does. <laughs> the Second Punic War apparently broke out in 218 AD. Wow. All right. Great. Let's see. Next question. The blank mountains divided Greece into isolated valleys. Mm, I don't know my Greek geography, but maybe Bert does. Pindus, the Pindus Mountains. Correct, okay. The Greek gods were said to reside atop blank in Greece. All right, pretty easy one. The Olympus, not quite, Bert. I think it's got it, you know, it's mostly there. The correct answer is Mount Olympus, um, but it predicted the and Olympus. So, yeah, all right. Not quite right, but, you know, pretty close. During the rise of Greek city-states, blank replaced bronze. Iron, all right. I don't know. Maybe you can just infer that one from, you know, metal. Blank is called the father of medicine. Hmm, okay. Hippocrates, correct. The Hippocratic Oath. All right. Pretty impressive, right? Bert seems to know a lot of these. All right, more on the Second Punic War. During the Second Punic War, Hannibal famously led an army of war blank across the Alps, although many of them perished in the harsh conditions. Hmm. Elephants, war elephants. Bert knows a lot about Greek history, it seems. <laughs> okay, on December 21st, 1864, General Sherman's famous March to the Sea concluded with the capture of blank. So this is part of the US Civil War. Um, let's see if Bert knows. Concluded with the capture of Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia. That's not correct. Correct is Savannah, Georgia. So it knew that it was, you know, a city in the south. It just picked the wrong one. All right. 
All right, this is kind of a random one. On dress shirts, button down, spread, and tab. Oh, excuse me. On dress shirts, button down, spread, and tab are popular types of blank. Button down, I don't know, spread, tab. Button buttons. <laughs> All right, now the correct answer is collars. So maybe Bert doesn't know as much about fashion. I'm not sure. Let's keep going. All right, so... <laughs> So Bert, Bert clearly has some knowledge of history. Uh, what about basic arithmetic? Does it know how to do math? Purely by looking at the, uh, the characters. Yes, it knows that one plus one equals two. All right. That's maybe, you know, the most fundamental math operation. Let's try a little you know, harder one here. Five plus five. Is it 10? Five. Eh, wrong. All right. So Bert doesn't know arithmetic really, but you know, kind of understands like, oh, this is an equation and a, a number probably goes here. And, you know, good guess, but uh, not quite. All right, so it would be great if Bert, you know, could provide tech support if it knew a lot about IT. If you are having trouble with your computer, you should probably try blank it. Did you unplug it and plug it back in? Two two with yeah yeah the word I put in there was rebooting. You should probably try rebooting your computer if it's not working, but it didn't know that. Bummer. All right. Okay. How about a uh, misspelled word? The correct spelling of misspelled is miss. Mm, yeah. It's interesting. So, you know, it uh, it got really close. It got, it needed to predict these three tokens, right? Miss, spell, old. And it missed the middle one, but it got the outer two. So, uh, you know, pretty, pretty impressive, I think, but even though it didn't quite get it right. All right, here's a sports question. Super Bowl 50 was an American football game in which the blank defeated the Carolina Panthers 24 to 10 to earn their third Super Bowl title. What do you think, Bert? The Dallas Steelers. Hmm. Now, yeah, correct is Denver Broncos. So, you know, it's it's got the notion of like, all right, it's some kind of uh, some city and their team won the Super Bowl. Doesn't seem to know the correct answer, but... It's making sense of the question, at least. All right, back to uh, some Greek history here, I think. Blank was called the father of history. One of my friends is reading this guy's book. He says it's amazing. Hmm, John Cartbius. I don't know if that's a real person or not. <laughs> the correct answer uh, is Herodotus. He was one of the first historians, first, uh, first people to kind of like record history and, you know, do it in a, in a more analytical way. The Greek religion was blank, meaning that they believed in many gods. So given the definition of a word, can Bert kind of fill in what that word was? I bet it can. Polytheistic, yes. Claiming to be the son of the blank, the Sapa Inca was both emperor and chief religious leader. Sun, claiming to be the son of the sun. So, you know, it doesn't just know Greek history. It knows some uh, South American history as well. Cool. All right. So, you know, this one I kind of, I grabbed by like uh, going to a random Wikipedia article and like taking a sentence from it that looked like sort of a factoid. Uh, Luisa Hanun, born in 1954, is the head of Algeria, Algeria's Workers' Party. In 2004, she became the first woman to run for blank. Now, I, it does kind of feel like Bert could maybe get this right just based on, you know, the, like the structure of the sentence. President of Algeria. <laughs> Correct. All right, that's pretty impressive. So either it knows that she's the president of Algeria or it knows that, you know, like she ran for president and there's Algeria in the question. But yeah, impressive. The most abundant gas released into the atmosphere by a volcano is blank vapor. Bit of a science question here. Water, water vapor, yep. 
The moon is bright because it blank the light of the sun. Okay. So again, kind of requires some understanding of, you know, why the moon uh, shines. Yeah, the moon is bright because it reflects the light of the sun. It's pretty impressive. Earth is the blank planet from the sun. Ah, do you know the order, Bert? Third. Yes. Wow. Okay. The circumference of the Earth is blank miles. All right, this would be really impressive if Bert can pull this off. <laughs> Approximately point, point 0.6. No, it's 24,901 miles. Sorry, Bert. 1952 episode of I Love Lucy was titled Lucy is Ensen, uh, Ensente hmm. because the word blank was censored. Sex, hmm. good guess, but pregnant. Wow. Different standards back then. In general, you know, I tried a number of like popular culture quiz questions and it didn't seem to do as well. So here's another one. 7-Eleven stores were temporarily converted into quickie marts to promote the release of the blank movie. So where are quickie marts from? They're from the Simpsons. Transformers movie? No. All right, what else we got? Ah, uh, yes. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. You need one more key press to get that code unlock, the Konami code. C? No, you need to press start. <laughs> Emperor Blank created the Death Star to rule the galaxy. He tried so many times to build a Death Star. Death Star after Death Star. Kaha, no, Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> All right, Bert doesn't know it's Star Wars. It's disappointing. Help me, Obi-Wan Blank. You're my only hope. It almost just rolled right off my tongue. It's so obvious. Kenobi. All right, all right. Bert redeemed itself. It knows a little bit of Star Wars. That's good. An actor and producer known as much for his versatility as he is for his handsome face. Golden Globe winner Brad Pitt's most widely recognized role may be Tyler Durden in blank. This was the first movie that I went to go see with my now wife. The Men, no, Fight Club, classic. All right, so how about some, you know, do you know, do you have an understanding of the calendar, Bert? There are blank months in a year. 365. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, there's uh, something about the number of things in a year. 365 is the number of days, Bert, not months. There are 31 days in October and blank days in November. Use the little rhyme, Bert. 31? Ah, good guess. Now, nope, 30. Mother's Day is celebrated on the blank Sunday of May each year. Probably an American holiday, I'm guessing. I'm not sure if any anyone else has this. All right. First Sunday? Yeah, I guess that it needs to be an order word, but, you know, the correct answer is second, so it doesn't seem to know. Nope, there's kind of a repeat, just formatted differently. No, nope, still doesn't know it. All right, one more try here, Bert, at, you know, delivering tech support. If you're having issues with your internet, you need to try blank your router. What do you do to your router when your internet's not working? Tutuing. <laughs> no, you need to reboot it. Got the ING. Try, maybe, you know, it knows, like, try blank. It needs to be conjugated with ing. All right, what else we got? Ah, yeah, a little more, you know, tech knowledge. What's the keyboard shortcut for cutting text? A cursor. You can press a cursor to cut text. Yeah, maybe. Control plus X, please. Waiter, I would like to order a cheeseburger with french fries, a cherry Coke, and some blank ice cream. Hmm. Now, we could do different things in here. So, Bert, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? That's what we want to know. 
Vanilla? No, that's wrong, Bert. Chocolate. <laughs> On food packaging, a circle with a U indicates that the food is certified as blank. I don't know. Vegasure? No, kosher. Look at that. It's like a combination of vegan and kosher. It's one of the two. I'm going to try Vegasure. That's my, that's my vote. That's my guess. <laughs> So close, I guess, right? Man, and that was like based on a description of what, you know, goes on to the package. All right, I really hate when he leaves the toilet seat. Hmm, does Bert know about toilet seats? Open, correct is up. Yeah, toilet seat open, yeah, up. Yeah, I think that's fair. Bert doesn't like it either, I guess. Hmm, all right, some little, you know, kind of corporate detail here. The Eon is produced in India at Hyundai's blank plant for the domestic and export markets as the company's entry-level city car. Do you know where their factory is? Chennai, okay, at Hyundai's Chennai plant. Wow, all right. A weather blank is an attempt to predict the weather. That seems like a dead giveaway. Prediction? Ah, uh, forecast. I was going to say prediction, too. All right. The Lincoln Home National Historic Site is in the state of... More U.S. history? Come on. Illinois. It knows. A blank is a gymnastics move, which would make you flip 360 degrees. All right. So, you know, maybe just from context, gymnastics, flip... What is it? 360 flip. <laughs> nice. That's a pretty good answer. We're looking for somersault, but you know, 360 flip, that's technically correct. All right, so I'm pretty amazed by the amount of knowledge, the number of factoids that uh, Bert has stored in his weights. Um, there are a couple caveats that I need to, to, to point out here. So the first one is just that, you know, like, I came up with these questions kind of manually, and so they're heavily biased towards things that Bert actually seemed to know. Um, you know, I, if I like explored a direction like, ah, oh, what about like pop culture? And Bert didn't seem to know much about pop culture. So I'm like, all right, that's, that's not interesting. So let's, you know, go back to, uh, let's try a different area um, to see if, you know, Bert understands something else better. So clearly it, seem, it seems to have a lot of knowledge of history and especially uh, ancient Greek history, apparently. Um, but yeah, so, you know, these questions are biased towards like things that Bert actually seems to understand. Um, and then the second one, uh, if you're familiar with Bert, you know, if you, if you know a fair amount about it, then you know that one of the big limitations with it is that it can't be used to generate text. So it would be really cool if instead of doing this like fill in the blank trick, if we could just ask it a question, right? Like who was the prime minister of the United Kingdom during the second world war? And then have Bert kind of, you know, spit out, like generate, say like, ah, oh, yes, Winston Churchill was the prime minister, you know, um, it can't do that. Uh, but at the same time, it seems like, you know, based on what I've been showing you, like it, it can, you just have to structure it as like a fill in the blank, right? And then it generates the answer, it seems to be. So here's, here's kind of something going on behind the scenes that uh, um, helps kind of explain how this is working. So what I do for these questions is I take the sentence with the answer in it and I tokenize the answer. So it turns out that uh, um, Bert has a token for Winston and for Churchill. And so what I send in here is actually uh, two mask tokens. And then all the other tokens as well was the prime, you know, so on. And then I asked Bert to predict what, you know, what was here and then what was here. So we're cheating a little bit here in that uh, I'm telling Bert how many tokens it needs to predict. And so what does that mean? Well, you know, I, I don't think it means that it's not cheating that much because it, it's Bert clearly still knows that like Winston Churchill was the prime minister during the second world war. Um, but it, yeah, it, it does kind of confirm like, no, you can't really use this to generate text because uh, you can't use this like, uh, you know, mass language model trick to generate text 
because you don't know how many tokens need to be in the answer. That's kind of the, the limiting factor. I guess if you wanted to try bringing this to quiz night and you know having it help you, um, maybe you would try like you know putting one mask token in and then two and three and four and five, and then look at the answers that Burke comes up with and see like, all right, which of those looks like the most reasonable or something like that. Um, but yeah, so Bert's, Bert's limited in its ability to actually answer quiz, quiz questions, but clearly though, it has a lot of knowledge. That was kind of more the, uh, the goal, I think, for this experiment. All right, to, to wrap this up, um, you know, there's a number of topics that us nerds like to get in fights about. Um, I thought it'd be fun to kind of force Bert to weigh in and, and see what Bert's opinion is. And to address that token count problem, I kind of had to ask the, the questions uh, with multiple different possible answers so that I'm not like biasing Bert towards a particular answer. So let's take a look at what it picked. Starting with uh, gaming. All right, who's got the best video game console? Bert says Japan. I put Microsoft in there for that one. All right, what if the, what if it's Sony? Nope, still Japan. What if it's Nintendo? Still Japan. <laughs> so whether it's, you know, Sony or Nintendo, like it's, it's Japan either way is what Bert says. I'm a little disappointed. I'm kind of a, uh, I really love all three companies, but I, if I had to pick, I'd probably side with uh, the Xbox. So let's see if I can force it to kind of, you know, pick Xbox for me. Uh, I prefer the blank over the PS4. Bert prefers the iPod 4. <laughs> Interesting. That's not, uh, that's not quite right. Looking for Xbox One there. I prefer the blank over the PlayStation 3. The Xbox 2. <laughs> so the, the second generation Xbox was called the Xbox 360. Uh, but, you know, I'll accept Xbox 2. I think that works. Okay, James Cameron has made many great films, but which is your favorite, Bert? Which one do you like best? The of Titanic. <laughs> I was trying to get it to predict Terminator 2. How about Avatar? Nope, Titanic. How about <laughs> Titanic? Yes. <laughs> All right. So, you know, apparently Bert, even though Terminator 2 is about an AI that becomes self-aware and subjugates all of humanity, Bert uh, really prefers Titanic. So I guess Bert is a softie at heart. All right. <laughs> mm, I don't always drink beer, but when I do, I prefer, what do you prefer, Bert? A and ofs. No, looking for Dos Equis. <laughs> or how about Stella Artois? Mm, a ands. Now, all right. Bert clearly has no idea <laughs> about beer. <laughs> Not in the training or something. I don't know. Okay, Star Wars. This is this is really important here. So episode blank is the best of the original Star Wars trilogy. What do you think, Bert? Episode three. No. Five? No. Four? No. Just, it's three. Six? Now three. <laughs> so, yeah. Three's, uh, three's pretty good. It's where um, Anakin turns into Darth Vader, so Bert's got kind of a dark taste, I guess, in the, in the Star Wars universe. I don't know. Most people would pick five, I think. The acronym GIF, which stands for Graphics Interchange Format, should be pronounced blank, like the brand of peanut butter. GIF. No, no. <laughs> Should be pronounced like G is a J. Come on. Chris McCormick creates helpful illustrations and clear explanations of difficult subjects in blank and natural language processing. What do you think? Computer linguistics. Cool. <laughs> so clearly it's, you know, inferring there from, from context, was, which is interesting. It doesn't know anything about me. Uh, but thank you, Bert. That's a very nice compliment. <laughs> All right. That was fun. Um, Posted the link to the to the notebook down in the description, so check it out. You can uh, feed it your own questions, see what else you can find out about it. Someone did point me to a data set called Cloth um, that uh, it's uh, you know sort of like a multiple choice in some fill in the blanks, I think. Um, and yeah, it could be. I think we could apply this to that data set, even though the, the data set's intended for multiple choice and and for fine tuning on it, but. Um, yeah, so there's other, other sources for these questions. Uh, but yeah, that was fun. Thanks, guys.